Should you ignore your ex if you want them back? A lot of coaches will tell you to ignore your ex. It's kind of something that seems like it's in the same vein as the hard to get idea or the no contact rule. And a lot of people will even be confused. They'll say, wait a minute, but I thought I wasn't supposed to contact my ex. So coach Lee, are you saying that I should respond to them? That doesn't make sense. Well, it does if you understand my no contact rule. And that is no contact is that you don't initiate, but you should not ignore your ex. And I'm going to tell you why you shouldn't ignore them if you want them back. And I'm also going to tell you what you should do instead. So first of all, if you don't want your ex back, if you just want to move on, get over it, or if you broke up with them and you're wondering if you should ignore them or not, if you don't want your ex back, it doesn't matter what you do. Ignore them. Whatever. It's not about strategy at that point. But I can tell you this, that I know based on talking to thousands of people going through breakups, that ignoring your ex will lower your chances of getting back together with them. And here's why. First of all, put yourself in the place of your ex. If you broke up with someone and then you realize that you want them back, that you made a mistake, do you think it would be easy to reach out to that person? If you're being honest with yourself, you will probably realize that it's not, that there's a lot of anxiety, even from the person who did the dumping. And a lot of times we only associate anxiety with the person who's been dumped. But if you want your ex back, it's important to try to get in their head a little bit, to try to understand that it's not going to be easy for them either. And one of the reasons is because they don't know if you're mad at them. And if you've been doing no contact like you should have, then they don't know anything and they don't have any information to go on. And you see, that's a good thing because it allows them to actually experience the breakup and the seriousness of the situation that they can't just flippantly toss you aside and then get you back whenever they want. That's not how you treat people. So your ex is learning how to be a better person, maybe also just life and what they want and what they've actually done. See, a lot of times a person doesn't really grasp what they've done or they have become so used to the idea that it seems minimal. It doesn't seem like as much of a factor and as much of something that's going to affect them as it actually becomes. So no contact allows them to see that. But once they do, as I talk about in another video I have about what happens when your ex really has that realization moment. And I'll link to that video at the end of this one. But what it's like to actually be in that situation, to have that aha moment where it's like, I want this person back. This was a mistake. And so the video is actually called when your ex realizes it was a mistake. And I'll link to that at the end of this video. But it's actually quite difficult for them simply because they don't know how you'll respond. And so they're facing rejection, which you may be thinking, well, that's ironic because this person rejected me by breaking up with me. Breaking up with someone is the ultimate rejection. And so I totally get that. My point simply is now your ex is actually more on the same page as you as far as the seriousness of it, the anxiety of it, the pain of it. And now they associate the risk of rejection and the risk of loss with you. So that's a way that you get some of the power back, even though I don't really like that word in this situation. But more importantly, your attractiveness goes up simply because they don't know if they can get you. And so your value goes up simply because of the principle of supply and demand. And it's not just true in a free market economy. It's also true when you're dealing with relationships, because when someone is not easily gotten back or when you realize you could lose someone, when you no longer take them for granted, that's when their value goes up as it should be. You see, this is not an artificial inflation of your value. This is helping this person to see your real value because a breakup is the ultimate form of taking you for granted. That's what's happened here. And so when your ex gets to that moment where they don't take you for granted anymore, when they realize I potentially have really made a big mistake and I want to be with this person, that's what you want, right? So when they reach out to you, you should ignore them. That's what some people will tell you is do this to get your ex back. But when they come back, don't let anything happen. And they will tell you that your ex is just going to keep coming at you. That now all of a sudden you've gone from being a have not to have too much of this person. It kind of sounds profound and deep and wise, but I'm here to tell you from real cases with having coaches, plural, 
on my staff who talk to people and from having worked with two other organizations who had staffs of coaches talking to people. I'm looking at a mountain of evidence here. I'm not just saying what I think because it sounds good. And I'm not just saying it so that I'll get more clicks on YouTube. I'm telling you based on actual cases, actual results, that when you ignore someone, you lower your chances. You make it a lot more difficult on yourself to get your ex back. And the simple reason is that once they feel that rejection from you, the first thought that they experience is that they have blown it. And all you can do then is hope that they try again, that they are willing to go through that potential rejection again. And some people will, a minority will, somewhere around 30%. But even in cases where the person really wants you back, rejection is difficult. Trust me, when I talk to men especially, since they are the ones who are expected still today to do most, if not all, of the approaching, the moving of the relationship forward, the making the first move, all those things. Men are expected to do that. And so just simply because of that, they face most of the rejection. When I'm trying to explain the mind of a man to a woman who's wanting to get a boyfriend and she's baffled by what she's experienced, a lot of times I have to tell her the reason it makes no sense to you is because you haven't lived the same life. You don't have the same experience. And of course, men don't have the same experience as women. We both are set up to misunderstand each other. But with women, a lot of times I had to remind them that this man most likely has faced somewhere around 10 times the rejection that you have. And that's a very conservative estimate. Most men, it's more like 30 or 40 times, because if women will admit their experience with dating and relationships, most of the time, it's the guy that makes the first move. Maybe, maybe once or twice a woman has approached, taken that first action, asked the man out, it's not as common. And so men have faced a lot more rejection. And each time it seems to just hurt more and the anxiety actually builds. And I have to try to get these guys to understand that just because she's not taking action does not mean she's not interested because in his mind, he's always had to take that action. And I'm trying to show this woman that just because he's not taking action, it doesn't mean he's not interested because he's gun shy. He's so used to rejection that a lot of times men are assuming the answer is no. If you give any kind of friction or it appears that you're not interested in any way. So when you play hard to get, for example, most guys now are trained to think you're not interested. Very few will continue to pursue you. And yet a lot of women think I'm supposed to play hard to get. That's another one of those ideas. Sounds great and seems to work in Hollywood, but it doesn't work in real life. Now that doesn't mean you should be easy to get, but there should be some progress. The other person, should feel there's interest from you. And the same is true here because I have talked to a lot of people who have reached out one time and now they're wanting to get a coaching session. They're wanting to talk to me or they're wanting to talk to coach Ken and they'll say, I reached out and he ignored me or she ignored me. So I can't reach out again. And so I'm telling you, I'm letting you see into this person's mind. This isn't theory. I'm quoting people. They assume they can't reach out again because you ignored them. And while I'm certainly not saying that when they reach out to you, you should say, I'm so glad you contacted me. I've missed you so much. My life has been over. You have just made my year by reaching out. You shouldn't do all that stuff, but ignoring them actually makes it to where they assume they have blown it. And then you risk whether or not they're going to try again, whether or not they think there's any chance at all. And when someone ignores you, a lot of times your mind will even think they must be with someone else. And so, a lot of times someone, even if they love you very much, they realize it was a mistake and they want you back. They'll say, I guess I just have to move on. I guess I just have to find a way. And they're miserable, but they assume you'll just ignore them. And so they think it's pointless to reach out to you. That's where you go from mystery to giving them an answer. And just because it's not the answer that they want, it's still an answer in their mind. They can't read your mind. Matter of fact, if you've been using the no contact rules you should have, you were a mystery. And so they can't read your mind and you are just hoping that they get some message from you ignoring them. If anything, the message they get is you will get a negative if you contact me. And that negative is rejection because I don't have to tell you that if someone ignores you, if you texted someone and they didn't respond to you at all, is that a positive experience? 
It's humiliating. It's frustrating. It hurts. And people don't like to be rejected. Men, women, Smurf, nobody likes to be rejected. You may think, well, they deserve it because they broke up with me. I agree. But do you want to get this person back or do you want revenge? That's the question you have to ask yourself. Because I can tell you, based on 20 years of doing this, ignoring your ex is likely to work well as revenge, but works very poorly if you want to get back together with them. I talk about this more in my emergency breakup kit, and I link to that in the description below. But just know that if you ignore someone, you are putting a negative in front of them that hurts. And as you know, with science and with your life, when you get punished for something, when you feel a negative, you are more likely to go in the other direction. It doesn't make you look like a challenge. It doesn't make you look like you are so busy and attractive. It just makes them think there's no hope and they've blown it and they might as well give up. What you need to do is to respond. Respond casually but politely like it's no big deal. And if on that first message where they reach out to you, if they ask you to go have coffee, to go have lunch, to meet them face to face, that is a very good sign. It often means they're going to try to talk you into coming back to them. And there's some anxiety there. And so that's another reason not to ignore them. But if they, on the first message, are just seeing how you're doing, or it seems like it's not a big deal, like they might even just say, what's up? I agree. That's pretty immature. But try to have a little bit of sympathy toward this person and that they don't exactly know what to say. They feel bad. They wonder if they can get you back. They don't know what's going on with you. And so asking what's going on with you, what's up, is kind of all they can think of. Sure, be disappointed that that's all they can think of, but understand that they're easing into this. If they want to get you back, they're certainly not going to start with that. I, I encourage them to. When I talk to someone who has done the dumping and she says, I want my boyfriend back, or he says, I want my girlfriend back, I tell them, no, don't do the no contact rule. People seem to think that's what they should do. No, your job at that point is to reach out and to be honest, to apologize to ask if they will consider taking you back. But unless they've talked to me, they don't know that. And so a lot of times they ease into it. They see how you're going to respond. Do you respond nicely, politely, like there's some warmth there? And you shouldn't be too warm, but you shouldn't be cold either. Just casual and polite. Let them have the opening to do what they need to do. I'm not saying you should do it. I'm just saying let it be open so that they can. And then when they do, when they ask you face to face or they eventually get to it in text messaging. Again, show reservation. I'm not saying you give it to them all at once, but say something as simple as, I'm open to that, but I want to take it one day at a time. I'm not sure. Something like that. Ignoring them will often feel like no, and you are unlikely to hear from them in most situations. So keep that in mind while you are applying the no contact rule.